we don't union with the and we f find him in ways that only those who are one with Jesus can find him life Lord thank you Lord that we we walk as foreigners we walk as disciples and students and people seeking information but you hold us in oneness you know your own body and you draw us in to that relationship that we might walk with you as one and grow up I into the head in all things Lord that may just sound like words oh it is wonderful it is wonderful O-N-E wonderful we love you thank you for your love just continue now to speak to our hearts according to your heart open our eyes that we might see how you view us in the relationship you died to bring us truly into we love you Jesus in your name we pray amen amen well last class we I enjoyed what the Lord said last I mean it it spoke to my heart and like I said I I am not a teacher here now I am a journeyer member of the body a needful member and uh, because of that I um, I am receiving what the Spirit is saying to us in, in a from a position of really needing really wanting and I love that um, because really there is nothing that I'm qualified to teach I need the Lord and I want to partake of him all the days of my life the last class we talked about Jesus wants us to stay in and uh, really spoke to my heart but at the end of the day there the Holy Spirit just really kind of emphasized um, that he was talking to them opening up the scriptures in the books of Moses remember that Luke chapter 24 verses 28 through 29 let's just now wait a second that's not the one I'm looking for it's I think it's before them but it's where he actually began to open up the scriptures to them as they were walking and their hearts began to burn and then he made as though he would go further well at this point in the journey in these scriptures also Jesus had approached the disciples who were now his body and began to talk with them about the scriptures which is really cool but he had not yet and that's what we'll be sharing today communed with them oh bless the Lord <laughs> in that we find wonder and we will we will talk about that in a moment but he opened up the scriptures to them in such a manner of course that their hearts burned they knew they knew there was more going on here than just talking about scriptures but he went as made himself as if he would go further and last class we I believe we heard the heart of the Lord in the reality that he did not want to enter into communion with those who were not desirous of him beyond just opening up a few scriptures and then walking on in other words and I know we've discussed this but to refresh our memories he wasn't interested in um, teaching some disciples what some scriptures meant and these disciples being all excited that they got some deep revelation from God and then letting Jesus go his merry way in other words Jesus is gone they've got the revelation from the scriptures he opened up and they're content to continue in that manner now one of the things that I heard in the heart of Jesus last class was that Jesus does not have to open up the depths of his heart in communion to those who are quite satisfied to have a relationship of just getting deep things out of the word from him and he wanted to see if they would be satisfied with something short of Christ himself Christ himself communion and we will talk more about this isn't 
scriptures opening up and God revealing things to us, which is a wonderful thing and can be a part of communion. But the communion is where we partake of the Lord himself. You, you cannot have communion without union with Christ. You can't. You can, maybe you can hear something deep from the word of God and write notes and get excited when he opens the scriptures, but you can't have communion unless you're one with him as his body. That's different. And, and he wasn't about to take that step until he knew that they weren't going to be happy with something apart from Christ himself in their midst, literally in them, amen, because they're his body now. So he was testing their heart to see where they were at. And sure enough, doesn't he test our hearts? Sometimes he can give us this incredible revelation in the word or oh, he can uh, maybe give us a beautiful worship song or uh, article or we minister and Christ flows out of us or we have a great discussion with somebody about the cross and the Lord moves. But we become satisfied with that thing and let Jesus pass on by afterwards. Whereas the thing he spoke or the thing he ministered or the thing he shared became our satisfaction rather than the wonder of being joined to the living Christ and literally just pouring out the one that we cannot live without. And the moment he took off down the road, if you will, we would have went, wait a second. I can't live or breathe or move without you, Jesus. I don't care how much you just used me as your body or vessel. You are the thing that is central. You're the one. That's everything. Do not pass me by. And a heart that's aware of Christ more than his things, even more than his spiritual things, is a heart that's beginning to get ready for communion. Amen? Now let's just think of this, and this is just cool. But the last time that Jesus had taken communion with his body or had this experience, who, well, can you think of when it was? The Last Supper. Before he went to the cross, he opened himself up to his disciples in a new way. Now, they had walked together for three and a half years, and he had done miracles, and he had taught. He had uh, prepared them for ministry, used them in ministry, used them in many miracles and blessings and different things. But right before he was taken from them to be slain, he, he gathered them in a very intimate. Now, couldn't you just sense there was something going on in his heart when he did that? Y'all familiar in those scriptures in the Gospels? where all of a sudden Jesus says, go get a donkey and get this place prepared. We're going to have a meal and on and on. And, um, you know, you can just feel that there was something in his heart that had a desire. Didn't he say that in the scriptures? I have desired to eat this meal with you. That's, geez, that's God saying, I desire, I desire to have a meal like this with you and I really look forward to doing it after I raise up from the dead in my kingdom you know that's I think in John or somewhere some, it's a good one to look up but, but he was going I'm excited for what for another class around the fire while we eat fish no for another parable explanation no I'm excited for this meal of course, they didn't understand that. And he said, and I'm really excited to have this meal with you when I enter into my kingdom. Well, he said that before he died and brought forth a body. But just think of this. These two fellows are the first human beings to have communion on this level with the risen Christ. I mean, he literally broke bread with these guys. Isn't it cool? It's so cool. Let's just read 
in verses 30 and 31 of chapter 24 of Luke. How many of you want to fulfill the desire of Jesus' heart? Mm. Mm -hmm. I know everybody's raising their hand everywhere. <laughs> and it came to pass as he sat at meat with them. Listen, he took bread and blessed it and broke it and gave it to them. And their eyes were opened and they knew him. Amen. In the breaking of the bread, in the fellowship of communion, that's when they knew him. Now, we know many things about him as he's teaching us and revealing things to us, even making our hearts burn as he opens up the scriptures. But it's different when we break bread with him because at that point, we are eating his flesh and we're drinking his blood as his own body. He's not teaching us things about him. He's saying, you're my bride. You're my body. Eat my flesh, drink my blood because we're one now. We're in communion. Forget the classroom. Forget ministry. Forget everything you do or did or will do. Just know one thing. You're mine and I am yours and let's break bread because we're one. Now their eyes are opened for they know who. Him who was raised up as the head of a new body whom they are members of. Hallelujah. How did they know him? By the flesh and blood of the person getting on the inside of them. We know him because he's in us. Not in our heads. Not in our actions. Eventually in our actions. But our life. And that is the relationship of knowing him that he desires and looks for forward to and gets excited about and wants to have with everybody who is him ever since he rose up from among the dead as a new man with many members. In other words, Jesus isn't just wanting to say, Kim, I'm going to open up Genesis to Malachi to you, and every single word I am going to show you me to the point that your heart's going to burn in you, and you're going to write ten books about it, and you're going to preach 10 sermons about it, and you're going to sing 10 songs about it, and you're going to get excited about it. He says, I got something better for you than that. I'm going to break bread with you, and I'm going to literally put my life inside of you because you're my body and we're one, and you're going to be filled up with my spirit and my nature, and you're going to carry my essence to the world as my very own body. Not, not it just things I showed you. You're going to carry me in my nature, in my spirit, in my resurrected life. You're eating my flesh. You're drinking my blood. That's better than any book. You are the living epistle. You are Jesus on this planet. You're his arm extended. You're where his spirit dwells that fulfills every word. Because all these words in our Bibles, they're just spirit and life. When communion, you get the spirit and the life. The words have done their job. You get the spirit and the life. Hallelujah. That's good. You know, one person can read a, a psalm and get some really cool things from God. And they get excited. And I'm one of those people. Boy, I need the Lord. Another person reads that psalm, but every line is like the bread of Christ himself being eaten into their being, like filling them with Jesus. And the life of it, the spirit, the eternal spirit of the lamb, that sacred lamb life, getting into their veins, quickening their heart, all their inward parts, all their motives and their intents are starting to get filled up with the spirit of God's life. Hoo they may not remember one word from that psalm, but I'll tell you, when they walk down the street, they're going to be filled up with the living God. Why? Because they had communion in that psalm. Because why? Because they're the body of Christ, not the scholars of Christ. These dudes started as disciples, and they did a little glory dance when their hearts burned in them. You know, but as soon as Jesus started passing on down the road, they went, I 
think there's more. <laughs> Go get that guy. <laughs> I don't think this glory dance is going to last long enough to sustain us. Get him back with me. And once he got back with them and knew they wanted him, not just his things, then he took them into communion and he said, now I'm going to show you what it's like to be one with me and get in the word. And he starts breaking bread. You're my body. That bread, Jesus took it at the Last Supper in the gospel. said, this represents my body, which was broken for you. In other words, you're eating this bread. You're saying we're his members, and we will be broken because he is our life. And you take that blood. This blood represents the blood of the new covenant. What is that? The new relationship. What is that? This is the blood of the new body. This is the blood that will flow in the members who will be part of that new relationship of being one with the risen Christ. Drink it. Drink all of it. Get my life in you. Listen, this is day three. This is the day Jesus rose from the dead. And one of the first things he did was find these two guys and have communion with them. You are representing to the world the way I want to get in the scriptures with my body. I want it to be communion. Old Testament, our hearts burned. Old Testament, Moses saw things that made his face glow. But the heart stops burning and the face stops glowing. And you're left with you again. And Jesus is gone and the glory is gone and you're back down the mountain with the miserable life there. And no more glory. So you have to get back up for 40 days and fill up again. But he said, that's the old. And though the ministration of that glory was truly glorious, it was glorious when Moses' face glowed and he saw God. It's glorious when our hearts burned and we see things in the word. But there is a glory that excelleth, that remaineth, that fadeth not away. And that glory is called Christ in us. And he does not fade, and he does not stop burning. The light of his life never goeth out in the temple which we are as his body. And that is the relationship we have now from the first day after he rose up from among the dead and walked with those two disciples to this very moment in our lives right now. We are part of his body. We learn of him through communion. We partake of him through his life in us, and we don't revert back to the old relationship. We don't re revert back to the Old Testament, the Old Cove. Well, the Old Testament testifies of him who is now our life, so we can go to the Old Testament and have communion there. We can go anywhere in the Word of God. It all declares Christ. But we don't go as learners. We go as the body that is part of him. And we're coming to get bread. We're coming to get wine. We're coming to eat his flesh, to drink his blood, get filled up with the one we're joined to because we are his body where his life dwells. Well, that's different, isn't it? That's exciting. And these two guys, <laughs> praise the Lord that they got to experience this. I, I just, you know, but we get to experience this. Every time we open our heart to Jesus and say, Lord, I know it's so awesome for you to reveal something to, in, in the scriptures, using me in deep ways. Thank you that you will, because I'm your body. You'll always use me. You'll always flow through me. Your life will always be pouring. But Lord, when I relate to you in my inner man, in my identity, in my relationship with you, I'm your body. I'm not your minister. I'm not your learner. I'm not your teacher. I'm not your disciple. I am your bone and flesh. I'm a member of you. I'm your bride, your temple, your body, your house. See, those are permanent things, not do things. They are, they're the I am things, not the I do things. Who you are is one with him. What you do should simply flow out from what you are and not define who you are. Amen? That's the joy of being one with Jesus. And um, so we want to walk in communion. We want to live in communion. We want to learn in communion. We want to remain in communion. Because communion comes from common union, which is just simply that we are one with Jesus. And because we are one with Jesus, the table is always spread. His heart is always open. 
His life is always flowing into every member that's joined to him. And it's always accessible to learn of him through the breaking of bread and the drinking of wine. In other words, the pouring out of the life of the matter. When the scriptures become like poured out wine, broken bread, that we eat and drink, then we start entering into communion. When they become deep things that add something spiritual to us, we're probably not at the communion table quite yet. Now the very same scripture may open up, but it's broken bread and poured out wine. Hallelujah. And we're getting the life of the thing. And we are now dead, crucified, buried. That old person that would add something to itself has been put away through Christ's death. And what we are now is just simply a new creation in him. Join to him. Amen. I, I love it. I love it. Isn't this just such a wonderful journey? What a great journey. And that we're just discovering the Lord's heart. I, I, just, uh, I just think it's so refreshing but life-changing to see the Lord's heart. Just to see the Lord's heart. Oh, amen. And we remember that at one point he called them foolish and slow of heart. And I believe that foolish and slow of heart, God help me, God help me, <laughs> is those who, and we all do it, because we are just selfish apart from Christ, but who take the things of God unto themselves instead of believing that the resurrection is to bring about a body full of life. Foolish and slow of heart to believe all that God hath done. Jesus used those words about them not comprehending his death, burial, and resurrection. And you know, we're all foolish and slow of heart until the message of the cross does become something that we partake of as the body of Jesus now. And um, slow of heart, slow of heart because we're content with something that is not the partaking of that bread, becoming part of that person that we love. Amen. Um, just a sentence from the book. How significant that it was not in the expounding of the scriptures that Jesus was made known, but in the breaking of bread, which represents his living, risen body. It is his life, and his life is in the blood. It's about the life coming inside of us and not about him blessing our life that is separate from him. And so communion comes with our risen Lord in this way, but yet, and we will look at this more next week. We're not going to focus on this this week, but I'm going to plant a seed, a lovely little seed that gets crushed into bread corn. Here, I'm going to drink something. Bread or the body of Jesus goes through a process, a lovely, lovely process called threshing and bruising and conforming to, let me just read the paragraph, okay? It's second paragraph on page 27 under Knowing Jesus. When Jesus was at the Last Supper with his disciples, he told them that the bread was his body. And there you have a scripture, Matthew 26 and verse 26. How is bread made? It is formed by the process of taking many seeds and crushing them and making them into one loaf. Spiritually, all of the individual dying seeds have been crushed and melded together in one in order to become one loaf. That is what it means to be Christ's body. Nothing else will ever truly be his body. And so here we see that, that the communion is with this risen Lord who is now head of his body, but that as bread... We are made one with each other. And we go through not just a breaking, but a crushing to be able to be formed into one loaf. One loaf. In other words, this body has a relationship with the risen Christ. And in a certain sense, we together now in resurrection are partaking of one life. There's one spirit, one father, one Lord. 1 Corinthians verse 12 Chapter 12 speaks of this. In other words, we are not just two disciples walking together in Bible school or on the road to Emmaus trying to learn as much as we can about Jesus and see who can learn the most the fastest. Or we're not two disciples sitting at the communion table seeing who can eat more bread and drink more wine to get more Jesus in them. 
that's not really a true picture of, of body, of bread, or of communion. But when he died and rose again, he made us one body. And he is the one that feels the, the one body. So I don't have like an enormously gorged index finger and four withering, shriveled up little fingers around it. In other words, he wants my body to partake. And so there's this reality that comes with resurrection communion that we together, we together are the partakers of his life. And he's the special one that fills everyone, and we are not. And we're not in competition with each other to learn more or grow faster. But we, through love, edify each other with all the supply of life that comes through communion. Well, that doesn't work very well with our selfish pride <laughs> that, that needs to go through a crushing process. Because in, in us, we want to be special. Even when it comes to the things of God, we want to be the one who communes more, <laughs> or learns more, or eats more bread, or drinks more wine. We take the things of the Lord, and, and with selfishness, we, we, uh, we need the grace of God to find their true purpose. And so the Lord will work by his Holy Spirit in our lives, and he's doing that in our lives right now by his grace, in me included, big time, hallelujah for his love, to awaken our hearts that we together are his body. And, and we spoke about this our first and second class, but this is no, our second and third class in this Emmaus Road journey. But the real place to really comprehend his heart for his body is just or he, that we are one body, one loaf. It's just to see his heart. I mean, we can dissect it in the word all day, but our little selfish heart will still hold on to its desire to be on top. I speak from experience. <laughs> but when we see his view of his own body and his heart, then all of a sudden we go, well, that's just the way he sees it. That's just how he feels about it. This is what he, he died to bring forth, and this is he views to the least of them, one with him, and all of us together one. And so we just continue to trust the Lord's grace and cleave to the cross and yield to the Holy Spirit as he brings us into that one loaf. You know, and that, that's, that's part of communion, too, because that is the true body of his resurrection. We in ourselves are not that body, but together we are that body because that's what he rose up and sat down in himself, made one with him. And so Jesus begins to not just bring us into a new view of his body that changes everything, but brings us into the communion of that, that revolutionizes our relationship with him and the word and with the others and takes it from doctrine into life, 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 fullness, fullness, fullness. And, um, and in that sense, we begin to just enter in to something completely different than we've ever known. I mean, how many of you guys, and I once again, and all these things include myself, have just had a season where it was just dry because you were just trying to get things from God or grow spiritually apart from him being the growth. Or, and, you know, you just felt that, that empty vacuum in your heart where the communing presence of Christ was meant to fill you. And you went, I know there's more, and I want that. I want him, 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 him. I want him. And it's not about knowing more. It's just him. It's the him that makes the difference. That's he is the difference and the fulfillment. And you say, Lord, just do whatever you need to do in my life to take me out of this dry place of just knowing so many things, but into that wonderful place of being filled with you, where I am just your body. And you saw the Holy Spirit begin to take you on a, a journey to bring you back into that place that your heart longs after because we love Jesus and we want him. We do. Our born-again hearts, they want the Lord for the Lord himself. And then we saw the grace of God just have Jesus himself come and draw us, just like he approached these guys, and begin to divide out the old relationship from the new, opening up the scriptures to where our hearts burn to actually bringing us into the wonder of the communion. We saw God do that. We saw God begin to take what we, we knew of the cross 
and take it out of our definition of communion into his definition of communion. Because these guys, when Jesus walked up to them, these two disciples, they were talking about the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. And Jesus said to them, what manner of conversation are you having? Or what manner of communion is this? I don't know this kind of communion, talking about the cross. And they're like, we have the biggest whiz-bang fellowship conference of the world about the cross. Death, burial, and a resurrection. And we are filled up with a good thing. And Jesus might walk up to him and say, well, what manner of communication is this? Well, it's called talking about the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. I'd say it's a pretty good manner. And he goes, well, I love you for your heart, and I'm approaching you guys because you want the cross, praise God. But I'm going to bring you into what I call communion. And he did, by love. And you know what? None of that is a disappointment. or a, It's what we all need. We need the grace of God to take hearts that want the cross and are communing in the best way they know how and bring us into his true eternal communion so that we can really enter into the reality of it. Well, that's just God's place and his grace. We can't take that journey without Jesus <laughs> leading us on. So in none of this is their condemnation. None of it. It's all what every disciple needs to go through, and only Jesus can bring them through. And so thank you, God, huh? Thank you, God, for your faithfulness to not leave us in our definition of communion, but to bring us into yours by grace, to guide and lead our hearts there. And amen. Kim, you had something. And his disciples come to him and they say, Lord, you know, uh, we have these people. Well, you know, you must go and eat. But Jesus was concerned because the people wanted to be fed of the multitudes. And he goes forth and he feeds the multitude. And then he goes forth and then Peter's walking on water. And then he goes forth and all these things are going on. And we look at them when I have always looked at them and read them like they were miracles. And they were, you know, just I never looked at it like Jesus going forth, like just more of the Lord. And then the Lord showed me, as I was reading more and more and more of the Lord and spending more time with him, that when the disciples came and said, Lord, they're hungry, and there's only four loaves of bread, and they kind of like went like this before him, that it was them that he broke, that the bread went forth. Thank you, Jesus. That's beautiful. Because they're his body. That's right. Yeah. That's it. More of the Lord because he is the bread. Yes. And he is their life, and they were broken of him, and through that the people were fed. Him. That's a picture of Christ's life coming out of his body, the broken bread, his members, and feeding the multitude exponentially. Thank you. Yes. Thank you, Jesus, for sharing that with him and us. That is the Lord. Hallelujah. And when we're his body or his bread, like those disciples were a picture of, the sky's the limit because we're not just ministers. We are literally plugged into the fountain of endless supply. <laughs> I mean, if we're body, then we have all the resources of the head to tap into. And God hath given the Son the Spirit without measure. Okay. So if the Son is who we're joined to as source in all we do because we're being bred, not just ministers. Sky's the limit. Endless supply. Fountains of living waters. But that only happens to body or bread. Bread being a word for, used for body in the scriptures. But when we take our place as his body or as his bread and, in good point, Kim, we allow him to break us because we can be the body like bread but we won't allow the breaking to come. But it's in the breaking and the blessing that the multiplication or the release of life comes forth. And if we're his body, the, the slain Christ, the lamb's body, there will be a breaking of his own body. There will be a breaking of his bread with the purpose of releasing the blessing of more life to others. Just like that scripture God showed you. He breaks us and blesses us so he can feed the multitudes his life through us. Because we are his body, his bread. And, uh, oh, I'm just so blessed with that. 
I am really blessed, and that is the Lord. That is truly the Lord, and praise God for that. You know, and all of a sudden you're sitting in Bible school, and we've been talking about this in heart learning, and it just isn't about how much you can do or learn or be, how spiritual you can act or even how many. You're just so happy to be his body, to be in communion as someone who's one with him and joined to his corporate. Your whole heart is in a different universe. You've left just the, the religious path of pursuing God, getting something from him, doing something for him, earning something to him. And you've taken on oneness. And you're just his. And what you're getting is not information or credits or accolades of man. You're getting life as it flows in through union that you didn't even earn. And you're growing by his spirit in you. Your head isn't getting puffed up, and, but you're being filled up with his nature and his life, and it's changing your attitudes in little things. Remember the man we talked about that was proof of the resurrection? Just because the attitude of his heart was so full of joy in the midst of so much loss. He says, I know Jesus rose from the dead. That man did not share one scripture with them. I know Jesus rose from the dead because no one could have that joy in their heart in the middle of what you're in unless Jesus was living inside of them. Isn't it exciting to be joined as body? I don't want any other relationship. You, they can take all the great relationships and go run away with them and have it to the uttermost. We, I as part of us, I am so happy to just be body. Amen? Because what we get is him. Filling us. Filling. And you know, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you, God, that you know every little time we enter into communion and his life fills us. Every little time that life comes out of us because we were in communion, the Father receives a fragrance of his Son in his nostrils. And the world is touched by life, not religion. And oh, that bread feeds people. It feeds people. It does. And, and that poured out life gives life to people. See, Religion doesn't do that. Deep things about the cross doesn't do that. Only the body can bring that because they have his life in them. And those little tiny reactions with our kids and at our jobs and towards ourselves when we fail or when the enemy is attacking us and we're getting all frazzled and emotional. And all of a sudden, the Prince of Peace that we've been eating and drinking of just overtakes that with his sweet presence and communing nature. Well, glory to God, that's the way resurrected the resurrected body of Jesus exists. He wins the battle by filling us up with his life. Well, that's the hope of being born again, is that the life of Jesus would overcome us. The hope of being born again isn't just a ticket to heaven from hell or a ministry or a good name in the community or a righteousness for our unrighteousness. The hope is that we get another life that will be everything we could never be, that will be what would love our enemies, what would love our families, what would be right in little tiny situations of life. Well, that's, that's the wonder of it. I mean, um, there is a book, I don't remember who wrote it, and I didn't read it but for this one chapter, but it was in heaven and judgment day or something, and mm -hmm. All these great people and the great ministers were there, and all and, and and the crowns and the, you know, the blessings and the rewards were being handed out from from God and the, on this throne and everything. And and the places of honor were being laid forth in front of all, you know, all, all the redeemed. And and these great men, evangelists that led millions to the Lord and healed. Millions and God used in power and all these things. And all of a sudden, you looked at the, the, the picture that was in this book, and these little old ladies that were in their prayer closets that never did anything, they're just getting this big old crown, just sitting way, you know, way off the line from, from the big minister. And these little, all of these people that nobody knew, they're just nobody. And they're just going, You gotta be kidding me. You gotta be kidding me. What's going on? 
you say, well, I'm just honoring my son. Well, nobody talked more about your son than that evangelist down there. Talked about? I'm talking about I'm honoring my son. You know, the life of my son lived through vessels. Well, I didn't see any. Well, he doesn't look like what you'd think he'd look like. These people took the lower seat so much you don't even know who they are. They made themselves of no reputation. Why? Because it was the sun in them. <laughs> Isn't it encouraging? Don't get caught up in the rat race. Can you just do that for me? Because I love y'all. Don't get caught up in the rat race. Don't take on the heavy burden. Just fall in love with the Lord and commune with him as a body. Get life if you forget every scripture and class that you've ever been taught. If you can't wow anybody with your deep revelation, if you don't minister one iota on a big old platform, would you just, just get out of the rat race and get the Lord? Just give God the Son and everyone else in the real way as his body. And don't worry what people think. Don't worry what your own little ambitious heart wants. Just fall in love with Jesus and get filled up with him as his body and receive that he's made you one. Well, I'm not as one as that big old evangelist. One loaf, baby, one loaf. One loaf, we're all one. No, there's not one big old seed poke. You ever had a piece of bread and there's just ginormous, ugly, big old seed, just like a popcorn gets caught up in your, in your gum? And you just go, man, I'm bleeding. I thought this was going to be that real expensive oatmeal bread that was going to, you know, really taste yummy. And someone did not grind up that one little kernel, and it, it's stuck in my gum. Oh, that kernel? Well, that's Billy Bob Joe the evangelist, and he was too important to just be ground up with the rest of you all his body. And he was a great man of God. Well, it sure doesn't go down well when I took a bite of the bread and I got this big old unground seeds stuck in my gum. I ain't feeling my belly. It's making my gums bleed. <sighs> you don't want to be the, the big old unground seed that makes somebody's gums bleed. You want to get ground up with the rest of all of us. I do too. I need that. And just be full of Jesus together. Let them live. And then God's going to break us and feed people and they're not going to go, that big old piece of popcorn <laughs> really did something special for me. It's just going to say, Jesus filled my empty soul through that bread of life. Amen? Well, that's what God called us to, to be his. And all these things that want to be something, they just need to get ground up by the love of God's heart, showing us that we're just one in him. You know, we want to see the beauty of it from his heart, and then we'll just let those things go. we just say, I don't want it anymore. I just want it. I want him. I want what he calls beautiful. I don't care what I think or what I think I have to have. I want what he thinks. Oh, the joy that will flood our souls. Isn't that just what we want? Just Jesus. That flag held high from the just mount, temple of our heart. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. I am yours. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. I receive the, what you see when you rose from the dead as your own. Yes, Lord. I receive communion. Yes, Lord. I receive just being your body. Oh, I want what you want. I want your desire to be fulfilled. Hallelujah, Lord. I am yours. Do with me as you will, because we are one. Amen. Well, let's just pray. Hallelujah. Father, we just thank you. We thank you for the wonder of this. Again, it's the O N E D E R, the wonder of being the body of the risen Christ. Oh, and what it means to your heart, Father, for those who will continue on this journey and let Christ. Give us the bread of life and the, the wine of life and, and fill us up corporately until he can just live through us. Oh, Lord, not just one Jesus of Nazareth, but a many-membered body covering this whole earth, pouring out the beauty and the nature of God, feeding the multitudes, touching this dark and dead place with eternal life. Oh, Lord, that's what body does. Oh, the body of Christ. Oh, how beautiful, how beautiful it is to your heart. Oh, that you died to bring it forth, that you died to bring it forth. Oh, and that you will work 
with grace extra hours around the clock to bring us into the true reality of it. Wake our hearts as we commune. May our eyes be opened. May we see the reality of it. Oh, not the revelation of it, but the reality of it that fills our souls, brings forth life from our innermost being makes us as a body under the risen sun. Oh, Father, oh, this is not the realm of man's work. It is the work of the Spirit. It is the work of God. So do your work. Have your way. Be glorified in us. Oh, not the glory that fadeth, not the glory that we have to go and run after, but the glory that is Christ in us, for we are his body. Lord, do it by your Spirit. Let the things of your heart just simmer and ponder and, and uh, bring forth in the hearts of the hearers. Oh, we love you. Thank you, Jesus. In your name we pray. Amen.